the passion of Jesus brings us peace. The verse for our meditation this evening is Isaiah 53. The punishment that was on him has brought us peace. I invite you to join me in praying the collect for peace. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Saints of God, holy and dearly loved, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the prayer that we just prayed isn't mine. It dates back to the 5th century. It is a prayer that pushes us to realize that that God is the source of all of our holy desires, all of our good works, and any good thing that is in us. And we pray that he would deliver us not from our enemies, but from the fear of our enemies, so that we would live in peace and quietness. And that we should recognize that this peace and quietness comes from Jesus, who is the source of peace. He speaks peace. Oftentimes, when we think about the circumstances of this life, we try and use those to judge if we're living in peace with God. When everything's going well, when we think we are the apple of God's eye, at this moment, we think, I'm at peace with God. And when when life seems like it's a living hell, when we ask if God has turned his back on us, we wonder, am I not at peace with God? Is he against me? The point is that we shouldn't be able to tell how God feels based on our circumstances. Blessings does not mean that God loves us, at least the things that we consider blessings. And hardships and pandemics and Towers falling on people, whether it's 2,000 years ago at Siloam or in 2002 in New York. All of these things are also a call to repent. But the circumstances don't tell us how God feels about us. No, it is through God's word. It is through that holy word that we know God's feelings towards us. If God didn't love us, he wouldn't call us to repent and let us face difficulties in this life that make us call out to him in faith. If God didn't love us, he wouldn't call and invite us to pray to him. He would abandon us to hell, and we would deserve it if God didn't love us. God sent his only begotten son, that that better word, the word that could never be taken back, that sure and certain word. He speaks to us by his son so that we would know the love of God. But he's done more than just speak. He has acted. The word became flesh to do everything so that we would belong to God. And it is by the word that you hear of his great love for you. You hear that he has justified you. He has made you right with him. And that he calls you back to him. The prophet Isaiah spoke of Jesus saying that the work of righteousness and peace is the product of his work and that security and peace forever would be the benefit. The benefit of this is that it doesn't depend on us, on our works. It doesn't leave us doubting in uncertainty, anguished over the questions, am I a Christian? Am I one of the elect? Am I righteous enough? Do my fruit of faith prove that I'm a Christian? No, the word of peace directs our attention to what Jesus has done. That he never committed a sin. That he bore our punishment. Isaiah glorified God saying, Lord, you assure us of your peace by all that you do. And that you have accomplished for us. The punishment that brings us peace was laid 
on Christ. And so our comfort comes from hearing that word. It comes from the certainty that he has called us to be his children. When he has placed his name on us in the waters of baptism. Then we hear that word, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The word and the sacraments don't depend on us, but they proclaim that Christ has done everything for you. The word of God is a word of peace that brings us peace. What did Jesus say to the disciples on the night of his resurrection when he appeared before them in the upper room? Peace. Peace be with you. That word of peace is a word of forgiveness. It's a word by which which Jesus says to them, I forgive you. I have died for the forgiveness of your sins. What I have bore them on the cross and still make you hold on to them and pay the price for them? I'm not against you. I'm not punishing you. I'm leaving you peace. I'm giving you my peace. I do not give as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. The passion of Jesus is a word of peace for the people of God and for this world. And so it is that we will put aside our arms. You see, God invites us to do that. You can't, on one hand, hold on to the promise of peace and forgiveness, and on the other hand, hold the intention to continue on sinning. You can't just say, well, I know what I want to do is wrong, but I'll do it anyway. I'm not going to worry about it. God will forgive me. That would be like saying, well, I'm a lion trainer, and I can mistreat them, and I can do whatever I want to them. I can do it all because I look after them and I feed them. And so they won't scratch me. They won't claw me. They won't attack me. Well, that happens. A lot of people live as enemies of the cross of Christ. They try and treat God like he was a domestic cat rather than the lion of the tribe of Judah. The Lord said by the prophet Isaiah, I will cause to be born praise from their lips, and I will give them peace. Yes, a peace to he who is near and to he who is far, says the Lord, and I will heal them. As for the evildoers, it will be for them like they are an ocean that is disturbed, that cannot be calmed because the, the waters keep rising up, and there is no peace for the evildoers says my God. All the world wants there to be peace, but that desire doesn't actually offer a solution. I remember a number of years ago, I received a call to serve a parish. And in the call documents, they they said, we are now a peaceful congregation. I asked them, uh, what was the conflict beforehand? And they hadn't even realized what they said. Well, it's that word now. That word now gave away that they had had a conflict. And I asked them about it. And I don't remember the details, but what I do remember is they never, they never came to peace with one another. A group of their brothers and sisters in Christ had left them. And there was no reconciliation. The two sides avoided each other. What a tragedy that they refuse to humble themselves and to forgive each other. They threw peace to the side and refused to let God's peace and forgiveness work in them because they were forgiven. By the forgiveness of sins, the passion of Jesus brings peace. Jesus has paid that debt. The sin that separates you from God has been dealt with. God restores tranquility. There's no more hostility between us and God. And so the question is, is are we going to live in such a way to continue to live 
in hostility towards others? Will we continue to refuse to forgive? Especially when Jesus has said to that word, to us, that word, peace. I know another situation where there had been a congregation that was divided, that they had separated. And after years, they came back together. They were reconciled to one another, even though they had been apart for years. Christ was glorified by this peace that was brought about by these Christians. It was a witness of the power of forgiveness that exists by the cross of Christ, not only to the parishioners in that congregation, but also to their entire community who saw these Christians living out their faith, who forgave one another their offenses because Christ had first forgiven them. The forgiveness that we receive from God motivates us, it pushes us to live lives of peace, to humble ourselves, to confess our sins, not only to God in a general way, but to actually go and confess the sins that we've done against other people and tell them, I'm sorry that I did this to you. Please forgive me. Forgiveness doesn't let us take out the log in our neighbor's eye without seeing the dust in our own. No, uh, God calls us to all to repent and that we would be restored to one another. And it's, it's in this way that we bear the cross, that there are times where we will be sinned against and we don't expect retribution, where we forgive the sins of those that have been committed against us and that we don't get the justice that we want. Freely you have received, freely give. This applies to forgiveness. And Paul writes to the Ephesians, talking about this peace that comes between us and other people. Jesus is our peace. Now, Paul was specifically talking about the hostilities that were between Jews and Gentiles. And he says that Jesus dealt with the hatred that separated them. By his death, he rendered powerless the law with its commandments and its rules to create for himself one, soul, one, one, one single man out of the two. And through that, he established peace. He wanted to bring to peace these two sides so that they would live under the cross. As for us, can we continue to live in hatred towards other people? Can we look down on other ethnic groups when Christ has come into this world to announce peace to the world? To those who are far and to those who are near. The passion of Jesus, the death of Jesus brings out peace. It drives us who are near and our loved ones to reconcile to one another. God has in Christ wanted to reconcile the entire world to himself. In doing this, that we would have peace through him by the blood of the cross. And that is what God has accomplished. <laughs> the passion of Jesus brings us peace. Jesus comes also among us. He says to you, peace, I forgive you. Dear saints, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.